Hey, my new life launchpad community, it's Austin Yule, one of the founders here at Sui Vera and one of your expert coaches in this My New Life Launchpad community. And I am so, so very excited to be here today and to be kicking off the masterclass flow. You'll be getting one of these every single month by either one of the four expert coaches in the My New Life Launchpad community. Uh, that would be myself, uh, Amber Mikesell, who is also uh, the a founder of Sui Vera, uh, Dr. Rosie Kuhn, who is an expert, like amazing expert in transformational coaching with over 40 years of experience and 14 books written, and uh, Robert Alexander Doran, who is our creative director. And he has incredible experience with personal life, such as overcoming addiction, and as well as really diving into personal branding, what that means. And he's really helped us grow uh, immensely on, on our online presence in the last year of working with him. So, so excited to have him, Rosie, and of course, I love Amber. Uh, always love working with her. And uh, so, yeah, we'll be the four leading the charge in terms of what you'll see in content every single month. And so the first week of every month, we'll be dropping a brand new masterclass. And the best part is we'll even be having some expert guests that we're talking to right now that would love to come in and share some amazing ideas, some thoughts, some classes, uh, some knowledge and wisdom that they've been just uh, accumulating over the years and wanting to pass it along to you. So I'm so very excited uh, to be the first one leading us off today. And what we'll be talking about today is overcoming fear and self-doubt. We're starting with this because it's just something we've all experienced. Uh, if I know I've, I've struggled with fear for many, many years of my life. I've definitely struggled with self-doubt. Um, playing sports growing up, uh, competitive sports, golf in my in my case. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I played competitive golf growing up. I had a full ride uh, golf scholarship to a D1 college, uh, University of Denver. And uh, my whole plan was to go professional, uh, play golf for the rest of my life. And uh, I'm actually the end of my junior year, ended up getting a major back injury. I had a herniated disc explosion in my neck, three cracked ribs, vertigo, and so as, all from playing golf. I was just overdoing it. And uh, the main reason I was actually overdoing it, to be honest, was it was my way of attempting to overcome fear. That fear of, you know, am I actually going to make it? Am I going to be able to live my dream? Am I going to be someone who can actually reach the goals of being a professional golfer to be one of the top or if not the top golfer to ever play. I mean, these were the things that I was holding deep in my heart uh, for years and years and years growing up that I deeply, deeply wanted to experience and achieve in my life. But oftentimes when we start to experience success, we get things like imposter syndrome and we get start all these fears start to come up because it's like, wow, I'm actually starting to make my way there. But, you know, Am I afraid of am I afraid of losing it all? Am I afraid of not living up to the potential that I see for myself and it seems like everyone around me is seeing for me? I mean, what if I don't make it? What if I don't become a professional golfer? Am I still gonna be loved? Am I still gonna be cared for, you know, cared about? Am I still gonna be appreciated? You know, all the things that I started to put all of my value outside of myself. Uh, that's what was kind of the the core essence of what was going on with, with why I was struggling with fear. Because all the actions I was taking and everything I was bringing into motion was coming from the intention of a fear-based model. And that is why I had self-doubt. And those just feed each other. It just gets so intertwined. And so that's really why I wanted to kind of dive in today and go over a few things that I feel have really, really helped me over the years and actually things I'm currently working on because that's what this community is really all about. It's about us sharing what has worked for us in the past, what we're focusing on right now, and what we would like to see, where we'd like to see ourselves in the future. What are some of those goals that we can reach, uh, those incremental uh, goals that we can achieve and we can all be there to support each other as we experience success at all levels, body, mind, emotion, and spirit. So let's dive in. All right, so let's start with understanding fear and self-doubt. And where do they come from? 
where, what is the origin of this? Because oftentimes we're so deep into the fear and self-doubt that we can't even fathom where did it even come from? You know, how many times are we actually asking that question? We're so caught up in that fear, in that self-doubt that, yeah, we definitely forget to ask, you know, where did, where did it even come from? Why am I even experiencing this fear? And a lot of this fear stems from childhood. And we actually have a really, really great podcast from Amber's new book that's coming out called Silence Your Inner Critic. You all, because you're in this community, are going to get an incredible first sneak peek at this. I'm very, very excited to share with that this with you in the next couple of months. Uh, and Amber will definitely share her journey as she just signed with a publisher. Um, but the reason I'm bringing this forward is because there are so many great aspects uh, about fear and self-doubt and overcoming them uh, in the, her Silence Your Inner Critic book. At the moment, we have an amazing set of podcasts that were set to be in alignment with the chapters of the book. And so we did that last fall uh, before we planned on uh, going the publishing route. And so uh, we were originally going to do the self-publishing, which is why we got into this. Uh, but hey, they still are extremely valuable and they go right in alignment with this topic. It's tracing the origin from childhood. And so, yeah, you can definitely check that link below. I'll put it in the comments here. Uh, and uh, you'll also be getting an email as well just to kind of help you through this and so that where you just have everything documented and you can always go back to it. Um, but yeah, tracing the origins of, of where this fear is coming from is so critical to learn to overcome it. Because what happens is we start to get trapped. We start to get caught up in the fear. And we just, a lot of what we do to overcome it is surface level. It's just enough to get us out, but not enough to get us out of the fear loop. And the loop is what we need to identify. That's when we need to take the time and start to go deep within, ask the, self, the, the questions about where is it coming from? How can I trace back that origin of this fear? Why do I keep going into this continual cycle and allowing myself to experience this fear? And most importantly, what am I supposed to learn from this fear? Right? Because you know, we're, fear is in many ways a really great tool for us, right? It shouldn't always be something that bogs us down and limits our potential. You know, fear is what creates that opportunity where, okay, you know, we, we don't know that what a hot stove is when we're children and we touch it and that kind of jolts us. And then we're a little bit afraid of like, hey, maybe we shouldn't do that. Well, that's self-preservation. That's kind of important. And so there are aspects of fear that help us in our evolution and as we grow. But unlike a long time ago, we are no longer in that state where we're attempting to fight off saber-toothed tigers uh, and, and fighting for our lives. Most individuals in the world at this point at least are able to uh, surpass those life or death situations like we had thousands of years ago. Uh, and but now we're the way that fear shows up today is a lot different. It's more societal based. It's influence based. And it's this external to internal that's helping define who we are. And unfortunately, our society has really taught us to embrace the external to internal uh, definition of self. So we take everything that's around us and we say, OK, based on what, you know, he, she, and they say about me, that helps me create my mental model, my model of myself, the way that I talk to myself, and the way that I understand who I am in relation to the world around me. And this is what can create an unfortunate fear loop, is because when we start to get feedback, that is, whether it's negative, and uh, like maybe for example, you have a fear of public speaking. That's a big one. Many of us struggle with that. I've struggled with that for a long time in my life and I still have moments where it pops up where I'm supposed to speak and I just, gosh, I feel my heart racing and it just goes crazy. And so, you know, what do we, what do, we do? Like, why, why is that such, why does it almost feel like it's a life and death? And what are we supposed to learn from that? And so something that's really helped me uh, in this process is tracing it back to when I actually was young and I started to to get up and we had class, you know, we had to share book reports. And I always struggled with that. Um, I understood it, but I had trouble explaining it. 
Um, you know, maybe if I, if I was in a conversation with the teacher, for example, and we talked about it and we had cool ideas about it and we expressed, you know, in collaboration together, you know, what it was about, I could effectively share my understanding and, and comprehension of the book and the themes. But when it comes to me just standing in front of a class and just sharing that, uh, I just kind of, I just would freeze. And I started to get that feedback, you know, you know kids kind of going like, wow, okay, or you know, twiddling their thumb, not paying attention, or, you know, it, as I was growing up, you know, started getting the phones and started looking at those, or even the teacher wasn't even paying attention. And I was whoa, okay, this is, um, you know, this is not great feedback. And so I started to get fear uh, around this, and I started to kind of pull in and, uh, and tell myself that I'm not a good public speaker. And wow, did that really shift the dynamic because that's what I kept telling myself. That's what it seemed like the world was telling me. And so that was the identity I started to take on. And so then I continued this loop of fear, this loop of fear that would keep me from limiting, it just limited my potential. And it wasn't until recently, honestly, and, you know, and this is, you know, over 20 years ago that I have had this fear. And uh, just in the last couple of years, I started doing videos on a regular basis where I finally start to feel comfortable in front of a camera, talking like this, sharing and having ideas that, you know, some of them aren't fully thought out in full transparency. I'm learning just like you. And when I had that realization is, you know, so is everyone. Uh, it's important to, to gain knowledge it's important to take the time to learn and grow, but none of us have it all figured out. And so just that awareness opened that door. And that's the beauty. You know, knowledge is limited by awareness. We can only do so much until we expand that awareness. We expand the awareness, then we can gain more knowledge and then we can grow. And so when I had that awareness, it just kind of kind of dropped, felt like I'd, all this weight just lifted off my shoulders. I was like, okay, good. You know, now I know that I don't just have to know everything and I have to kind of, you know, have this expectation that I do know everything. Uh, that's not the case. You know, we're still all learning. So that opened the door. It freed me up and just allowed me to be. And it relinquished that fear as much as possible. Now, there are still moments, you know, even before stepping in today onto this conversation, into this, uh, I, I had a little bit of apprehension, a little bit of fear. Yeah, sometimes that's a good thing. You know, having a little bit of nerves, uh, even some professional athletes will say they still have uh, have those nerves before they, you know, have a, a game-winning shot or, uh, you know, a, a tournament-winning putt, for example, for those golfers out there. Uh, and it's just, you know, it means you care. And that's a good thing. Caring is definitely a good thing. That stems from love. And so... If we can shift that mental model like we're talking about by tracing it back to some event or a series of events that created this loop, then from there we can get ourselves out of that loop and we no longer feel like that hamster on the wheel, you know, running fast and going nowhere. We start to feel more free and we can actually start to really grow from that perspective and show that we care and set the intention from love instead of fear. So now that we understand the origins of fear and how that can actually create a loop, you know, where does self-doubt come in? Self-doubt is the process in which we experience that loop. When we're constantly telling ourselves that we're not good enough, like I am not a good public speaker, that's what I kept saying. I kept having these I am statements. And these I am statements are identifiable. They, are, they have this feeling of permanence in terms of the actual influence of the words that we say. Uh, you know, I am is a very strong, strong statement and we often uh, undervalue the importance it has on our psyche, on, our, on the psychological and mental mind frames that we shape ourselves and our identity around. It is amazing what I am statements actually can create. It's like um, someone once said, uh, that what do we do with words? We spell them. And what do words feel like? They feel like spells, like we're casting a spell. And so when we say a word, like, you know, and, and words in, in a flow like, I am a bad public speaker, then I'm basically casting out uh, the spell that I am not a good 
public speaker. And that's the experience that I have. That was an incredible mental mind frame shift in that awareness to recognize, wow, what I say internally and externally really shape the experience that I have in my life. And so the, a lot of the fear that I'm experiencing and as a result, the self doubt that I'm accumulating by this fear cycle is my own doing. It's my own doing. That was a, that was a big one because I realized it had nothing to do with anyone else. It was not someone else's responsibility to unlock my potential. Only I have the capability of doing that. And self doubt and fear loops were not the tools to get me there. Self doubt. And there's a reason why it does start with self is because it is an internal game. It is an internal play. The self aspect is so critical here. And this isn't from a narcissistic self. This is from a, I love myself intention. That's why we can shift from self doubt into self love. Self love is the intention. And we can, we can move that internal aspect because for me, I feel that we are creator beings. We have the ability to create in every now moment, the experience that we want in life. And we can do that through what we believe and what we believe can turn into effective thoughts. And those thoughts can turn into actions and those actions can help shape a life that we desire to live. That is the creative power that we all have. And so when we can identify fear loops and recognize how they're supporting the self doubt that we're having, and we can basically break those fear loops in terms self doubt into self love, that's when we start to unlock our potential. Now that we've covered the origin of fear and self doubt, I'd love to dive into the strategies to overcome fear and self doubt. And today I'd like to talk to you about three of them, mindfulness and awareness, reframing our thoughts and action steps. So let's start with mindfulness and awareness. As I talked about in the origin section earlier in this conversation, mindfulness and awareness are so critical. Awareness being the most crucial, but mindfulness is an incredible tool to get us into a space of expanding our awareness. And the two flow beautifully together and create this amazing collaboration together where they feed off each other and grow and grow and grow. The more mindfulness you have, that can extend into awareness. And the more you expand your awareness, that can grow your mindfulness. And so it becomes this incredible, that's a positive loop. That's one that will actually enhance our way of being and ultimately our way of life. And so uh, I would love to kind of walk through a little bit of what I feel are great uh, mindfulness and awareness techniques. A simple mindfulness exercise to help us identify fear-based thoughts is one that actually Amber taught me uh, a long time ago when I first started my journey, crazy enough, almost 10 years ago. And uh, this one was interesting. Uh, it's really meant to focus on our stillness. And stillness is definitely an underrated aspect of our experience. You know, we are caught so much in the constant doing, 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 and doing. Uh, and Amber and I laugh all the time that we are in the human doings instead of being human beings. And so it's so important for us to pull back, reflect, and be the human being that we are. And then that can help us express our doing. Um, but that might be a different conversation in a different masterclass a little bit later. But I wanted to preface that and create context around it because this stillness is what helps us experience the being aspect of who we are. And oftentimes in the stillness, that's when we start to get those uh, aha moments or those, uh, you know, flashes of brilliance that each one of us experience in many different ways. I mean, how many times have you been actively thinking of something like, I know it, I know it, I know it. And the moment you kind of just stop thinking 
and you're maybe in between things and it just kind of pops up and it's right there. And, and then it's like, oh my gosh, there it is. That's the stillness. And so, you know, that's what we call unconscious stillness because it's happening without conscious thought. But imagine if we were to tap in consciously into stillness and what that would do. And that's what the exercise is really about today. And this is a simple meditation. You can put on some really relaxing music. I prefer Delta Wave music. And however you like to meditate, whether you lay down, uh, sit up like this, uh, you know, there's so many different ways to do it. I prefer to lay down, it just works best for me. I feel the most comfortable, the most relaxed. And that's what's key, whatever makes you relax. Because if you don't like to sit and you're sitting and you're constantly fidgeting, it's gonna be really hard to be still. Um, and so, uh, and vice versa, uh, whatever works best for you. And so for me, I'm just gonna share that when I lay down and I put on Delta music, especially if I lay down in my bed because my bed is just so comfortable, uh, I just feel, I feel the best. And you know, even if I have the ceiling fan on, I just feel a little bit of cool air. It's like, oh, that's like my spot. And, uh, and I also put in earplugs because earplugs really, really help me uh, just silence everything and I feel like I can access the stillness. And so part of this process is finding your way into the stillness. And once you have that space, um, and you might be asking real quick, you might be asking, well, why am I listening to Delta Wave music if I have earplugs in? And that's a great question. And the reason why is because regardless of whether I'm listening to them or not, Delta wave music actually affects the brain wave. So I don't necessarily need to specifically hear the music in order for that to be effective, uh, that it becomes uh, entrainment. And so when we can have the Delta frequency start to shift my brain wave frequency into an entrained pattern, then it can pull me into a deeper sense of stillness, regardless of whether I hear the music or not. And so I put in the earplugs as that extra level of um, action, if you will, to draw me deeper in. It just works for me. And so, okay, so once we're in there, once I feel that stillness and all I can hear is my breath, this is when I start to sift through my thoughts. It doesn't, you can have an intention behind the thoughts and oftentimes I just let it be because I don't want to, you know, there's this, this feeling of control, this wanting to like control the thought and what it's gonna be. But when we can release that and we can let it go and just let thoughts pop up, I almost have it kind of pop up almost in like this red balloon. I'm a visual person as well. And so it shows up in this red balloon and whatever that thought is, maybe it was like, wow, well, you know, um, I really messed up uh, on the golf course today or something like that. Or, or maybe it's, uh, you know, I, I wish I would have um, helped that one person or I wish I wasn't so busy today so I could do this to, you know, X, Y, and Z. There's so many different thoughts that come up for each one of us. And oftentimes they're very negative. And this practice is designed to help you be the observer role. It's helping you shift from the I am, for example, like the ones I was having, you know, I am a bad public speaker into seeing what thoughts come up and observe them instead of become them. And so when that kind of thought would come up, like I am a bad public speaker or I'm bad in front of the camera, which is one that was a little bit more recent, um, I would see it form in this, in this balloon and then either two things would happen. Either uh, I would watch that balloon just kind of start to float away, or I would actively pop it and just go, and it would just, just completely vanish. And so and it might pop up again, the same thought. And then I'd either do the same thing. I'd either let it go or I'd pop it, you know? And so, the more that I started to do that, the more I started to realize that I am actually in direction of my thoughts. I'm the one who is creating my thoughts. And so just like we were talking about when we had those aha moments that are unconscious, imagine what we could do if we were consciously creating those aha moments. That's what this is training. We're training ourselves into positive thoughts, into inspiration into deeper connection into authenticity because i know that i don't have to be 
bad at public speaking or bad in front of the camera. I have the opportunity at any moment to expand my awareness, gain the knowledge that I need in order to get better, and then practice and put the action steps in to actually doing it. And then be an experience like this, where I'm sitting in front of you in a camera and doing what I can at this moment uh, to express my thoughts and overcome my fear and self-doubt that I've had for over 20 years. And so when we can place ourselves in those situations and we create simple tools to allow us to do that, starting with our thoughts, well, our thoughts shape our actions. And when we start to have more positive thoughts and uh, replace them instead of I am, you know, a bad public speaker, it's like, I am great in front of the camera, or I am, I, I am great at talking in, in public spaces. And we start to kind of be the creator of our own destiny in that sense. And so those are what I replace in space. Once I've popped those balloon, you know, balloons or let it fly away, I, I replace that thought with this positive affirmation, if you will. And I let that sit. I let it ruminate. I let it connect. And I almost feel like this, this word or this thought bubble, then I just almost feel like it merges with my heart. And then I feel it all throughout my body because that's what I desire to embody. Not the negative thoughts, but the positive ones. The ones that I know can become my truth. That's what I'd like to embody. And so that's been an incredible, helpful technique. Thank you, my love, for helping me with that and for walking me through and helping me kind of create my own version of it as well uh, over the years and something that's really, really worked well for me. And so hopefully that's a great start and a great way. And I'd love for you to you know, comment below. If you give this one a shot and you see it works, great, let me know. If you take it, run with it and kind of create your own version of it, please share it with me in the community. We would love to see what's working for you and how how that starts to shift your mental mind frame so you can over, overcome fear and self-doubt. The next tool that I love to discuss and share what's really worked for me is reframing the thoughts. And I know that this mindfulness and awareness exercise that I just shared is very tied to this. Uh, and that's why I did that. I wanted to show here is an example of a mindfulness uh, technique that can support that. Uh, however, we're not always in a space where we're laying on our bed and listening to Delta Wave music and having earplugs in and in complete silence. What happens when we have thoughts when we're actively out and about in the world? Like, let's say we're actually playing golf or we're at work or, uh, you know, I mean, you name a thousand different ways that we're actually in motion. It's really hard to just stop and be in stillness. And so that's why I wanted to bring up this secondary tool that kind of takes the practicality of the mindfulness exercise and, and brings practicality into like an and just everyday action. And so reframing is so important. And the way that the best way that I found to do that is to learn how to catch myself. And um, I'm going to kind of back into this a little bit because one of the first things that Amber ever shared with me was to eliminate words from my vocabulary. And the first word was the word try. And uh, Yoda does a really, really great one. It says, do or do not, there is no try. Do or do not, there is no try. And Amber did a great job of expanding upon that and saying, okay, because try doesn't actually exist, you can't try to pick something up. You can't try to do something. As Yoda said, it's either done or it is not done. And so the moment she said, just bring awareness of how often you say try and catch yourself. Wow, was that an eye-opening experience for me. It really shifted the whole dynamic because I did not realize how often I was saying the word try. And it was centered around things that I, once I actually had the recognition, it took a couple weeks to really start to catch myself. And once I got in that flow of catching myself, I started to take it to the next step, which was realizing, well, where's the word try coming in the vocabulary? Like, where am I expressing it? Well, I was often expressing it into aspects of my life that weren't completed, that I wasn't good at, that I was actively saying that, you know, this was negative self-talk. This is where I was feeling self-doubt. This is where I was stuck in fear loops. And that's where I started to use the word try. That was the pattern I was creating because it was a way for me to almost feel somewhat good. Like, oh, I tried, like I put in effort, but the reality is I just didn't actually get it done. 
And that was all, only my responsibility to overcome that. And so the best way to do that was to learn how to reframe it real time. So when I got used to recognizing it and then I got used to catching the words, then I was able to reframe it. So if I said, for example, you know, I'm trying to do this, I would be like, I'm trying, hold on, I am. And then I would rephrase the word, something like, you know, actively seeking to get better at the short, at my short game in golf, because uh, it's an area that just really needs more attention and improvement. And from there, then I can grow the rest of my game, right? And so saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get better at golf. It got me really focused on what I actually desire to achieve and then gave me specificity around that and then gave me an action step. Reframing can help us move into action steps, which is the third stage. And so we'll, we'll touch on that in a moment. But the more that we can be really focused on reframing our words and we catch ourselves, whether we're saying it out loud or to ourselves, that's so critical. So this one, you can be anywhere or be doing anything and you can start to really catch yourself. After this video today, you know, start to catch yourself. Where are you saying negative aspects? Where are you providing words of self-doubt to yourself? Where are you keeping yourself limited by fear? instead of overcoming that fear and expressing values and words of self-love. All right, finally, I'd love to dive into the third aspect, which is action steps. We have the mindfulness awareness technique, we have the reframing our thoughts, and now we have the action steps. Because as we talked about before, our thoughts actually create our actions and help support our actions. And so when we have reframed our thoughts and got really good at that, then we can start to align our actions with our thoughts. This was a eye-opening experience for me as well, because I realized I might be thinking one thing and then I might be doing another. And so there was a lot of misalignment. And so my, I was confused by the actions I was taking. I was confused by the thoughts I was having. And then that would actually just confuse other people around me. And so how, and, and then I'd be like, well, okay, well, why are you confused? And I didn't realize how I'm, how confused I am within myself. And so oftentimes if we do get feedback, for example, that we're being confusing or we're not communicating well, it's often stemming just because, you know, our thoughts and our actions are misaligned. This is a great final step to, to actually put into action. It's an action step. And that is small measurable steps. So create your goal. What is it every single day that you can do? Is it, you know, right now, based on these three approaches, you know, can you do this, you know, all three of them, you know, once a day? Can you do one of them or two of them once a day? Maybe something you can immediately dive into is reframing thoughts, for example, okay? Then how can you integrate that into your daily life and just at least say, you know, I'm gonna do it once a day and then give yourself, you know, a check mark or a star or whatever whatever it is that, that feels good for you and, uh, and really achieve that and start to actually see, you know, can you track that? Do you have a journal? Do you have, you know, I had a whiteboard or I use my mirror a lot. I did a, um, a dry erase marker. Do not use a permanent marker. Not, that, that can lead to issues. Uh, use, just use a dry erase marker on, on the mirror or, um, or a whiteboard and just start to check, you know, once it just put a box, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and just do once. It could be that simple. It's just something that's a simple action step that you know that you can achieve and a way to track it so you know that you're actually doing it every single day. And as you get really, really good at it over a couple of weeks or a couple of months, whatever your flow is, uh, then add more and get to eventually get to a point where maybe uh, you're like me in the standpoint. It's like, hey, I will actively do my mindfulness and awareness technique that I shared earlier once or twice per week. And from there, then I will seek to do my reframe, my thought reframing every single day. And then the action steps are part of what support my ability to know that I'm actually doing the, the first two. And so now they're all working together. You know, it doesn't feel disjointed. It doesn't feel like, oh, I've got to do this. And then I've got to do this over here. You know, find ways for them to work together, to collaborate. Because collaboration, kind of to full circle, collaboration is from that place of love. It's from that place of connection. 
And if our goal as a whole is to overcome fear and overcome self-doubt, move from negativity into positivity, move from doubt into love, well, the more intention of love that we can bring into something, the better that we can achieve it. And so that's where us being in this space of collaboration, which is fueled by love, can help us do that. So actionable steps that you can do every single day that are small, that are achievable, that are measurable, can help you overcome this fear and self-doubt. And this could even be, one of the actionable steps could also be uh, affirmations. Positive affirmations are incredible. And that fits beautifully in with the reframing. And then that reframing can help as you do these mindfulness awareness uh, exercise, right? By shifting the bubble, what's in the bubble, into a negative, into a positive affirmation. So now they're all flowing together. There's a clear line that threads all of them together. And so that's how you can actually really grow at an exponential pace. All right, so as a quick recap here, everything that we covered today was all about overcoming fear and self-doubt. And we started by tracing the origin of that fear and the self-doubt. Where did it come from? Did it come from us as a child? Was it, uh, you know, as a teenager? Was it an adult? You know, what area and different Different areas that we experience fear might come from, might trace back to different parts of our lives. So be sure to be aware of that when you are tracing that back and, and do your best not to get overly frustrated with yourself. Give yourself grace and time to, you know, it's taken years, if not decades, to create this fear. So it's not gonna take us a couple minutes just to overcome it. It might take some time. To, to counterbalance that fear, get ourselves in neutrality and move ourselves from neutrality into a space of positivity and then from positivity into that space of unconditional love. And so uh, that was kind of the first aspect of, of us getting started. Then we moved from there uh, into the, the three techniques, the mindfulness awareness technique, which we talked about uh, the the bubbles and the thought bubbles and then letting them come in and out, popping them and then shifting them. And that moved into the uh, reframing our thoughts technique, which is where we actively catch ourselves saying something like, uh, you know, try or, you know, um, whatever it is that's negative, that's holding you back, that's some kind of self-doubt or uh, lack of self-worth or some kind of fear that's holding you back, uh, start to catch yourself. And when you start to say those things, like for me, uh, it was, you know, I, I'm, I'm bad in front of the camera. And so I started to have to catch myself on that. And then finally, the action steps. What are small, achievable action steps that can help you reach the goal that you want? that you're looking for and, and, and create the experience that you would like in your life. And that action step can actually work really well with uh, the first two and flow all together to create a seamless movement uh, where it gives you that exponential growth. And so hopefully that's a good recap and that kind of helps you uh, move through uh, uh, in this masterclass today on overcoming fear and self-doubt. And if you have any questions or if you want me to expand on any of this, just let me know. We are, uh, I'm going to follow up here with an email that's gonna kind of summarize everything we just talked about. And so everyone in the community will get this. Um, and for those who are watching this much later, uh, I will actually turn that into a PDF that you can download right here. And so that way there'll be longevity because we want this video and all of our masterclasses to be uh, up and available for everyone, whether they join tomorrow or you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, however it is, each one of these are gonna be valuable to someone because everyone's starting somewhere and everyone is in one aspect of their journey or another. And we are here to support each other in that. And so for now, for all the founding members that are watching this right now, uh, I'm so grateful to be in this with you and to connect with you like this. I will send you a follow-up email. We'll also actually attach a few really cool podcasts that we've done that are related to Silence Your Inner Critic, the book that Amber's gonna be putting out here uh, in the next couple months. And we're really excited to share. And that's goes hand in hand that inner critic wow does that really get into uh, creating uh, uh, fear and self-doubt uh, immensely and so uh, you know we'll, we'll probably be 
talking a lot about the inner critic through this community because of all the different topics that it touches. And that's just such a great thing and something that we all have to some degree. Finally, I'd like to kind of express here what the next steps are. So the way that this community works is we'll start the first week of the month with a masterclass just like this. And then afterwards, uh, the next week, uh, we will be doing some kind of uh, case study or personal success story uh, from one of our expert coaches. The third week will be a template. And this might be maybe a guided meditation. It might be a worksheet. It might be a, um, a workbook uh, that's more comprehensive. Uh, it, you know, it could there's so many different ways it might be a checklist something that you can download or use or have put action towards uh, that's what we'll offer and that will be related to this theme um, you know the theme of the master class every single month and then the fourth week is a live q a it will always be hosted by at least one of our expert coaches uh, and we'll do our best to make sure that as many of us are on it if not all of us as, as often as we can be and so uh, i believe that we're all going to be on it this month so really excited. So if you have any questions, start sharing them in the comments and then bring them in uh, to the conversation. Let's talk about it. Let's do that live Q&A at the end of the month. And, uh, and we'll make sure that you get all the details around that and, uh, and get to ask us the questions. And ultimately, we're in the community. So feel free to drop a line in one of the channels, a question for Amber, questions for Austin, questions for uh, Rosie, and questions for uh, Robert. Uh, those are on the left side of the channel. Share them and share your story, share where you're at. As long as you feel comfortable, we'd be honored and happy to help support and grow, share techniques and, and really grow this community to make the impact that we know it can make for people all around the world who are experiencing so many different, uh, different things in life. And so thank you so much for your time. Thank you for walking through this with me. And uh, um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.